Okay, my first recommendation to do on these master belt smokers is drill out all these rivets. Um, I had some problems with mine, and uh, yes, some of the screws are missing because I just had it apart, but um, replace them with some short quarter inch stainless steel screws. Um, <clears throat> this one you'll have to drill out in order to do this repair that I'm getting ready to show, and it's not very difficult. Now, one thing is behind this panel here is a lot of foam insulation. And that insulation can get burned, particularly in this area. <clears throat> cause it not to seal the heat as well and, and cause damage to the wiring down in here. So, <clears throat> what you need to do there, pull this back. And I would replace this foam insulation with fiberglass insulation. It's got a much higher heat tolerance and it's generally considered safe. So, All right, so I have gone ahead and removed all the screws but one on this. And um, if you'd like to see what I used here, just a little... I want to say that's a 3 8 quarter inch. I think it's a number 10, if I remember correctly. I did this a while back. <clears throat> and um, according to the master built instructions, we need to take these spades off, which we do because they're corroded pretty badly. They're all rusted and stuff. And that was a temporary one I put on for testing. And then we'll use some wire nuts to put on the new spades and go from there. Now, if you notice the box in here, my electrical box is totally loose, and that's because my heater element is out. Um, it actually uses the bracket on the heater element to uh, mount this box, along with these six screws. So once you pull the heater element and the six screws out, the little metal box in here is loose. Probably shouldn't be because <clears throat> it was foamed in place, but like I told you, the foam deter tends to deteriorate around this box because it gets hot. So, okay. Well, uh, I'm going to flip us over to the front side here. So, um, as you can see, I've pulled everything. Oops. Everything out of this smoker box. It's all, when I got it, it was used already. And um, this box right here was completely deteriorated to the point where it wasn't holding heat well. It had been modified and it wasn't working. So um, I actually made a new one out of 300 series stainless, which you can see this is not factory. But if anyone else, because I couldn't buy one, is why I made it. If anyone else needs one, um, I'll be happy to give you the prints or I'll maybe even make it for you. Um, just let me know. And then this was also rotted out, particularly this bottom piece here. It's completely rotted, so I replaced it. Now, as you can see, these have been used. So, um, I've had to repair this thing a few times now, but thought it'd be interesting. So, you can see back here, that's where the heater element goes. You can see the two holes that mount it. And you need to line up those two holes, the two holes in the metal bracket or box, the metal box that we were looking at just a minute ago. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna try to see if I can get an angle where you guys can see this. All right, so, now I gotta put the heater element into the body here. Now, this was a little bit on the long side, so I, uh, I bent these out just slightly so I can angle them in. Be careful of the plug when you bend them out, you don't damage it. And um, we need to get the gasket on there, so uh, let me grab that real quick. Now I bought the master belt kit here. I suggest you do the same, it's not expensive. I think it was like 25 bucks or something like that. It wasn't bad. Because of the new gasket, new mounting hardware, um, a lot of new stuff so I'll go ahead and put this on like that now the this stays flat to the surface like that and then those will go into the back plate 
So you want to make sure you get it in there correctly. Um, let's see these. What I think. Yeah. All right. So those. This side of my plate is threaded. <clears throat> so we want the coil going like this, and it went in nice and easy because I bent those out a little bit. And then I'm going to go into the back and screw those in. Now, if your box back there is loose, put one screw into it from the back side, and that will keep it tight while you mount this in. Uh, Obviously, don't put the cover on it. So. All I'm doing back here is just screwing this in. Uh, it's pretty easy to line. It's pretty much lined up once you stick it in there, so it's not too difficult. through the holes in the back of your box when you're done. Turn the camera around real quick so you can see. So, see, so you see the gasket poked through see the white gasket see where the two bolts go now some of these um, aren't threaded for some reason so they come with nuts in the hardware kit but you won't necessarily need it you will need it for the grounding screw which for some reason this kit didn't come with the grounding screw all right so as you can see I've got my ground wire here and two older uh, attachments for these here. Um, this one goes here, this one goes here, ground wire is screwed here. Now, for whatever reason, they didn't thread the back side of the plate for the ground wire, so you will have to put a bolt through that, like so, and then through that, and then screw it on the back side with a nut which is this little nut right here. Um, I'm going to see if I get a replacement for that because that one's real rusty. But uh, <clears throat> that's the short version on that. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to cut these wires. So I'm going to cut these out right here and leave as much length as you can on them because you're going to strip them and then you're going to they use wire nuts. I'm going to show you how to use it with wire nuts, but the best way to do it is actually to use a soldering iron and some shrink wrap. All right. So we're just going to strip this wire back. It is probably a 14 gauge yep 14 gauge all right so I've stripped them off and now we're just gonna put the new ones on no big deal they're not any uh, sort of specific one way or the other so you don't have to worry about, you know, the right or the left version. They're the same. So all you're going to want to do is kind of twist these ends together a little bit. And then you're going to take this cap. And you're going to want to twist them the same direction as you're twisting the cap, which is right. 
take this cap right here and you're going to spin it on. That's how you use a wire nut. Pretty simple. If you stripped it too far back and you can see metal past the wire nut, you need to cut part of it off. You don't want metal exposed past the wire nut. The wire nut acts like an insulator so you don't ground it out. Now this really isn't the best way to do this. I'm going to redo it later. Um, like I said, you need to, best thing to do would be to actually put these wires like this, solder it, and heat shrink it. And that would give you a nice weather tight seal. But, um, for testing purposes and getting this thing running again, we're going to use the wire nuts that came in the master built kit. Alright, so now we're just going to kind of curl this wire up a little bit and put that on right there. And you'll feel it kind of clip in. So do the same thing over here. Put our ground in. Actually, it's probably better to put the ground in first where you can get to it. Okay. I'm short one screw, so I'm going to just reuse the old one. Not a big deal. There's that. I'm just going to put this nut on the back of it, and it's installed. Alright, now, um, it looks like this is going to give us a little bit of a problem here, because I need to get this back on there, but the, uh, everything's wire nutted together, so I'm going to take these wire nuts back off and get this rubberized matting in there and then put it back together real quick. Now you can see those bolts are in, they stick out quite a bit. Um, if your original bolts are in decent condition, I'm sorry, these are screws, they're not bolts, but if your original screws are in decent condition, then uh, I would suggest looking at using them. Mine were not, obviously. They're pretty rusty and I want to be able to get them apart again if something happens. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, WD-40 can go a long way with some of this kind of stuff, but I need to go ahead and put these in. These are pretty simple. You line that up, it is three screws. As you see, I had to drum mine twice because I had the whole pattern off, but <clears throat> it's three screws there and two right here. And then this tray just slides in and out. So, no mounting required. So the hardest thing about getting this in is you don't have a lot of room to get a screwdriver. Um, as you can see, your angles are off. And <clears throat> the stock one's the same way. So, do your best, but if you can't get it in there tight, then use these. Not the best thing in the world to do, but it's better to have it tight to the box than not. Just don't tear up the uh, internal threads trying to use something that isn't meant to be used on a situation like this. So don't use the wrong size Phillips head and strip it out or something along those lines. But if you grab the outside with these and turn it real slow, it takes forever, but it'll work and you'll be able to get it out later. All right, so you got two screws there, two screws there. That puts that box back in there. And there it is, smoking away. Got two racks of ribs in there right now. So, looks like it's working. It's been at it for three hours. <laughs>